No RB, man. Seth Mustees trying to bring you round 13, if you don't mind. Round 13 recap, man. Uh, it's a pretty interesting round, another short round because of the bye weeks, second bye week. Uh, six more games this week, so it'll be a short and recap, man. So I know y'all probably like that. Major takeaways, man. So I guess if I had to come up with my major, major takeaway, bro, from this week, I would say Rock Collingwood, bro. Them boys, it pains me to say this, bro, as a cartoon supporter, y'all know me, man. But Collingwood look like they the real deal, man. They, they the beat Saints, they beat Melbourne, they beat Frio, bro. They beat, well, they beat us. Carlton, bro, and they really challenged Brisbane, bro. I think they lost by like seven points earlier in the year. <clears throat> in the year, but uh, yeah, man, the boys looking like they the big, the real deal, man, because they took down Melbourne this week. Uh, although Melbourne is going through a little slippery slope at the moment, but can't take it away from them, bro. Collingwood played the way that they did, and we'll get into it a little bit more further on. But that's my major takeaway, bro. Collingwood. First game of the week, bro. We had Port versus Richmond. Initially coming into this game, I didn't know how to read it, bro. I thought it would be a pretty good game. Um, obviously, poor coming back from the sh very poor form that they were showing earlier in the year, bro. It was pretty ass, bro. Uh, and obviously, conversely, how Richmond's playing right now, bro. They've been playing really, really good getting back to Richmond football, bro. If I ever seen it, bro. Uh, obviously, I'm a new footy fan, but as y'all know, man. Richmond is that pressure team, high pressure team, bro, and that's what they were looking like at the best when they were winning premierships, bro. So I wouldn't say this is quite the premiership team, bro, but they definitely got to it, especially this game, bro. The pressure uh, for it have turnovers as far as getting forward to turn the ball over. We all know that's Richmond's uh, DNA. Uh, they have the most points in the competition as far as forcing forward half, forward half turnovers, bro. So they do their thing, bro. They definitely did it. Uh, and Port Ball movement really looked poor for a lot of this game, bro. They just rattled, bro. They weren't clean with the footy. But it was an ugly win, bro. It was an ugly win. Port was competitive at times during this game. Uh, Richmond even turned the ball over themselves and gave more opportunities, bro. They struggled inside 50 as well. Obviously, without Tom Lynch, it'll be a little more uh, harder, of an, harder of an adjustment to make, especially with Lear. Lear back there, uh, the all Australian key defender, as we all know. Port really tightened their defense up mid-second quarter, bro. Uh, they really just had poor entries inside 50, bro. Both teams kind of struggled at times. Um, and Richmond really was able to just keep intercepting the ball, bro. Flossen obviously just has a huge impact on the game. Well, Port, Richmond really looked to run away, but Port went on a string of three goals, bro. Um, and in the third quarter, I think they were like 45% as far as uh, scoring from inside 50. They were doing that, bro. They, 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 they looked like how they were when they started to run, bro, because they can look dangerous, bro. Uh, but and actually, big problem that they had, bro, is that they didn't have a rep, bro. You know, Scott Lysett's hurt, but um, they had Fin Finlayson and Chunky Dixon playing the Ruckus game, bro. It really didn't work. Finlayson was getting smashed, bro. But despite that, Port didn't win the clearance, uh, surprisingly. But it goes to show how Richmond's midfield just was outclassing uh, Port's midfield, bro. So, yeah, man. Uh, Todd Marshall had three first half goals, bro. Travis Bolt, 25 disposals, nine clearances, 12 contested possessions. Uh, Shea Bolt in this game was very inaccurate. He could have been a very dangerous player, bro. But uh, no goals, five behinds. So, uh, Leaving a lot of points up there, bro, even though they won. So, Port could have got really beat a little worse than they did. Uh, and it was it was just a sloppy game, bro. Liam Baker, 26 disposals. Pre Deion Prestia, 25 disposals, 6 clearances, 12 contested possessions. Uh, There's a lot of injuries this game, a couple injuries this game. At least Zach Butters and Tom Jonas, they collided, bro. It looked pretty dirty, bro. I think this is the worst I've ever seen this footy player look like uh, as far as Zach Butters being injured and then colliding. So, it looked kind of crazy, bro. No cap, man. Thought he might have had a concussion, but he got right back on. Dumont had already been subbed out earlier. Um, so they would have been short numbers, but both of them continue to play. So good on you, but not sure if that's the right decision as far as health-wise goes. All right, so that's pretty much the end of that game, bro. Uh, the next game, Carlton Boys versus Essendon Boys, man. Uh, Essendon is 150th club anniversary, so they had a nice little ceremony. Um, it was pretty nice, bro. Um, a lot of the club legends out there, Dan Hurst and... Uh, a lot of the current players getting around each other and turning up, bro, getting a nice little moment and energy and environment going pre-game and all that. So it was cool, bro. Cool to see. Definitely cool to see. But as an end, obviously wasn't pumped up enough from this game. They were more competitive than I would have thought. But uh, at the end of the day, I don't think anybody thought they were going to win. Uh, MCG was a wet weather game, this game. Uh, and Adam Chair went down with a calf injury quarter one. So I was like, all right, bro. At this point, I was like, man, you know, we lose, but we have an injured player at the front, bro. 
the beginning of the game and we usually don't adjust well, but we definitely adjusted well and we, we made shit happen, bro. Uh, we looked like the better team in the wet weather, bro, which I was kind of surprised. Uh, it's good to notice when you notice the, the composure that your team can play in wet weather if your team has that luxury, bro. So it was good to see that for sure. Um, and I think our ball movement was really great this game, bro. Our efficiency from D50, moving the ball from D50 to 450, bro. This wasn't a Carlton that I really ever seen as far as being clean with the ball movement, bro. We usually just are a tough team and we force it forward, bro. And, but them boys getting it done, bro. Them boys look real good, bro. So if they can do this continually, bro, obviously SNN is the best defensive side um, from any aspect, bro, or um, the pressure side at all. But uh, they, they picked up the tackles more this game, but. Uh, despite that, we were still able to look good, bro. So if we can do that against better teams, teams with better defense and more pressure, and we can handle that pressure, we can be a very dangerous team, bro. Uh, in the first half, we had 53% efficiency. We're moving from D50 to 450 in the first half, bro. So let let you know over half the times we got it from there to there, from back to four, boom, we're scoring, bro. Uh, Essendon had 20 tackles to 10 in the first quarter, so they were on defense a lot. Uh, but obviously, it's more tackles than they have been having uh, in the past couple games already the majority of the year, so turn up for them boys. Uh, we made the SNP on sloppy possession, bro. Our defense was there, our pressure was there, we were looking good, bro. Um, at halftime, we were, so it was a little worried, though, because we weren't dominant in the center how we usually are, bro. SN I think, was up 11 to three at, at halftime, and to finish the game, um, it was 13 to eight, and SN won that count, actually, so. Um, Pit and net comeback, bro. Pit and net comeback. Draper was doing his thing in the midfield, I mean, uh, in the rump. Uh, so I won't take credit away from bro. I think he had two goals, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Harry Jones had two goals, one behind. I think this was the second game back uh, from injury. So it's good to see the young bull coming. Uh, Harry scored three goals. Charlie had two goals, and Harry had a behind as well. Uh, so not too high scoring, bro. Um, really, in the second half, Essendon couldn't buy Mark inside 50 at all, bro. We were just doing a good job of locking that down, bro. Lewis Young. Very good, bro. I was very impressed with Lewis Young. Didn't think he would be like that. Uh, or he would elevate his game to the extent that he has to be a throwaway that dogs kind of just threw away. Uh, we definitely need that considering what's been going on with our back line. Uh, Caleb Marchman came back for his first game in over like about three years. And he actually got hurt that game. So he's out for a little bit while, a little while now, bro. So it's just kink, but can't get a break at all, fam. Uh, and Darcy Parrish was subbed out in a calf injury, I think, in the third quarter. So. He only finished with the 10 disposals. So if he's not going, their team's not going at all. Jake Stringer was quiet. Granted, he just came back from injury. Wouldn't expect too much from him. Um, but we all know he can't be a dangerous player to eat. Uh, a match winner, if you don't mind, uh, when he's at his most dangerous, bro. So definitely glad that we were able to not let that happen, bro. Um, and there was no goals in the fourth quarter, man, at all, either from Carlton or Essendon, bro. Uh, we had to tighten up the defense, bro, after fucking uh, – Michael Voss said gave us, well, gave Carlton a, a yelling, uh, a thrashing. He really was turning up. He was barking up them boys, uh, really giving them the business after three, at three quarter time because of what he didn't like, bro. He didn't like what we were doing, man. And uh, glad we were able to adjust. We weren't able to score from that point, but as long as the defense is good, I'm sure Voss is happy with that. Um, I like to highlight Doherty too, bro. Doherty had a great game. Uh, it was just a collective effort, bro. I was really happy with this win. Well, I'd like to win by more. I'd like to run our percentage a little bit more, but I can't complain. A win's a win, and uh, we beat Essendon. I hate to have lost to Essendon, so sorry to spoil your 150th club anniversary, but we them boys, man. Uh, Dylan Shield actually turned up, man. That boy had 27, 15 consistent possessions, 10 tackles, bro. So that's very surprising. Uh, Crips Harry and Hewitt with 13, 12, and 10 contested possessions. So next game, we got Freo and Hawks. This was a game I was really looking forward to, bro. I know the Hawks had the potential to upset them boys. Uh, Frio, we all know who Frio is at this point, bro. A good defensive team. A team that can definitely run and gun and, and, and uh, beat you on offense through a collective effort, bro. Especially through the small forwards or that balanced effort with them boys, man. Um, they're kind of down on key talls right now, but they're still making it happen, bro. We know the Hawks attack fast, bro, so they can catch teams off guard, bro. Really, any defense I feel like the Hawks probably could do, could really knocked down, but I think they were without Gunston and Mitch Lewis's game. So that at that point, that's when I was like, all right, I don't think they're going to win. But they had a very good fourth half play, bro, despite both of them boys being out, bro. They really turned up. Um, 
They won critical contests, bro. Um, Hawks won critical moments in the game, and that's how they were, they were able to really uh, be at the position that they were at, bro. Hawks' pressure was good as well. Uh, sometimes they forced Frio to overuse the footy, bro, and, and that put Frio in some disadvantage at times. Uh, the Hawks were up at 10 to lead the halftime. They were up 32 with 21 inside 50s, bro. So they were, they put Frio under the pump, bro. They did, bro. Uh, but for, after halftime, Frio really fought out of it, bro. Um, in the third quarter, Fred really just decided to take territory, bro, and make and the talls really work. Uh, started working harder and able to support the contest, bro, and able to bring it to ground. And um, Smalls were able to build off that as well, bro. So we were able to get goals from ground level. They had 50 plus points from clearance, bro, and the efficiency inside 50. That's the reason why they won, bro. Season high in turnovers, and created and points from turnovers. But the Hawks won the center bounce for the first time this year, so they tried something new, bro. Uh, Obviously, it didn't work out, bro, because they just weren't able to get it done, man. Uh, the Hawks had 61 inside 50, so just not efficient enough inside there. They had the chance. They gave themselves the opportunity. They did for sure, bro, but just came up short, man, at the end of the day. Uh, this was Fife's return, and he looked decent, bro. He split uh, minutes in the midfield and the forward line. Uh, stat line is 21 disposals, five clearances, one goal, two behinds, and he could have had a really crazy goal, but um, wasn't able to quite get that one. Rayshaw had an amazing game, 37 disposal, seven tackles, and a game sitting the ceiling goal as well to put the game away. Um, it's a clutch performance by him. Uh, Luke Ryan, Brennan Cox, and Hayden Young all combined for 32 marks on the defensive line for for the over. So they really hold it down, were able to stop a lot of those 61 inside 50s. Some of those inside 50s, I'll say. But James Sicily and Yeager Romero both had stand up performances. For the Hawks as well, bro. So nothing to hang your head on, bro. I'll say, I guess if you're the Hawks, uh, keep working, bro. You, you definitely put up the effort against the tough teams and they'll pay off, bro, whether it's this season or going forward, bro. You'll know how to compete, bro. So keep doing that. Y'all doing your thing. Uh, next game, we got the Brisbane Lions versus St. Kilda Saints. I also was looking forward to this one as well. Um, Saints pressure was crazy, bro. And they were really early on, they were winning the contested possessions too, bro. They were really doing what they needed to do, bro. They really... Um, Took advantage of the fact that Brisbane's defense hasn't been up to par, hasn't been the best that it could be, and the Saints really wanted to punch them in the mouth early, and they did that, I think. Uh, they got rattled, Brisbane, and uh, but I think it just took a little bit of time for them to find momentum mid to late first quarter, and they did that as well, bro. After halftime, Brisbane really surged inside 50s, man, and uh, Saints were able to stay in the game, bro, and they really, uh, last 12 minutes, the Saints really just couldn't finish the game. They looked tired, bro. They, you could tell that they put all their effort into the earlier minutes of the game, bro. And um, that's just the, the Saints game, bro. It's in the guts game. And uh, it feels good, bro, but just wasn't able to perform up to McClellan's level and Lockie Neal's level. And um, Brisbane, Joe, Joe Danaher, and four times just getting more minutes together, bro. Hip between him and Hipwood, coming back from injury and all that, bro. So, <sighs> Brisbane defense definitely looked better this game, I'll say, although they did get punched early. They, 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 they stood up, bro. Their pressure looked a lot better, bro. Uh, they improved around stoppage and clearance um, as far as their defense goes. And they really they, they looked like they could be dangerous if they could put consistent defensive efforts, bro, knowing how, to, how they could score, bro. Uh, it looked like the Saints kind of just bombed the ball high, bro, inside 50 and allowed Brisbane, uh, like Marcus Adams and them boys, to really just intercept it down or even spoil it, bro, or Harris Andrews. So, um, there's not enough flat kicks and direct kicks on leads. And... Maybe I know Max King will definitely benefit from that, and if, if he's able to get better kicks than South 50, bro. So, collective effort against Max King, by the way, bro. The Saints defense played very well, bro. So, not enough scoring shots for the Saints, I would say. It just couldn't quite finish the game, man. Not enough opportunities. So, better luck next time, Saints. Thought you would win that one. Next game got GWS versus North, which was a game oh my God, I was not looking forward to at all, to be honest with you. Um, but it was actually not too bad, bro. North. Ass, bro. It's fun. It's entertaining to watch North, bro. See how ass they can be. I will say that. I uh, didn't know how to see how GWS has returned, uh, changed their form up a little bit, bro. They've been turning up, bro. They, under their new coach, they like to be playing with a more, uh, a different type of boldness and more daring and more risk taking, and, and they look good, bro. I mean, there's noticeable changes that we'll get into that. That just I will credit McVeigh with, with doing that, bro. And then it might pay off going forward. They probably won't make finals this year, but next year. It'll be interesting to see where they land, bro. Callum Ward is the first player ever for GWS to reach 200 games, so big milestone. Shout out to that boy. Um, I read the first quarter, it was five goals or nothing, bro. Like, you know, GWS was really turning up, bro. Their forward line was working, midfield was working, bro. Camilio, um, and they'll be getting Toronto back soon. So, seeing how they how they look, bro, they're gonna be pretty dangerous going forward, bro. 
Uh, it's not, I don't think this is just an easy win if you come up against these Giants, but especially last year, we've seen how they, they are a resilient club despite being one of the more injured teams and long-term, wise and short-term, they, they were able to win games despite that, even with their backs against the wall, man. But as far as this game goes, yeah, man, uh, GWS had the first seven goals, bro, of this game, so it took the second quarter for North to be able to get there, but uh, North was four, down 47 at halftime, bro, just they're showing no competitiveness. And really, at the second half, they were able to look more competitive, though. I'll give them that, bro. They, um, better offense, um, especially in the fourth quarter, but the defense was still ass, bro. They weren't able to stop GWS still, bro. Um, Cornelio had 34 disposals, three goals, bro. Really looked like dangerous, bro. But that boy looked like Beavis from Beavis and Butthead, man. So I'm going to be calling that boy Beavis from now on. Hillenberg, bro, they moved him back to the back again, bro. Career high disposal, number 37. And 16 marks while he was down there, bro. So, and I think he scored a goal as well, bro. So, that boy Himmelberg, bro, already looking like one of the best key backs already, bro. A couple games in the back off a of makeshift switch, bro, despite the coaching changes and all this, bro. So, he's already one of the better forwards, one of the more accurate forwards. I think maybe the most accurate forward, at least in my opinion, from what I've seen. But this year, this shows you Swiss Army not can be moved anywhere, bro. So, I wonder where he'll stay because he's pretty dangerous on both sides of the ball, man. Um, Jason Horn Francis is a player I'd like to highlight, bro. He <sighs> loses a lot of his composure, bro. I could tell after he got into it with Savani, after he really hit Brian in the back. Jason Horn Francis has been on that bullshit, bro. He's letting the frustration get to him. I know he's a young kid, man, but he got to get off that bullshit. Tyler Goldstein's one of the more the veterans on the team, veterans in the AFL, not just the team. And he's trying to mentor him and tell him and calm him down and give him advice, but he ain't even trying to hear it, bro. He's walking off. So it is just a lot, bro, between going on with that club, between David Noble's rumors of him not being the man for that, and then Jason Warren Francis liking trade offers that involve him, whether, they, whether it's fake or not, and him talking about leaving North and his on field antics. And yeah, man, it's a lot going on that way, bro. So uh, Luke Davies, Uniac did have a good game, though. 33 disposal, six tackles. Josh Simpkin had 32 disposal as well. Harry Perriman got hit pretty bad, bro, in the ribs. It looked like one of the more dangerous, one of the more hurtful injuries that I've seen in the NFL footy so far. Uh, but yeah, long story short, bro, I was to ask what, bro, if GWS looking good, continue. Yeah, bro, it's... North just asked, bro. In the last game, this week, we have Collingwood versus Melbourne, bro. I was definitely looking forward to this one. I, I was confident in Collingwood and beating Melbourne. Uh, it would have been hard, hard to predict Melbourne to lose three in a row, but it was more so about how Collingwood plays and other sides that they have beat, and really the way that they play. And it just goes to show, bro, that and boys is as dangerous as I thought, bro. I ain't gonna cap, bro. Uh, really early on, though, they were 0 for 5, bro. I mean, zero goals, five behinds in quarter one, bro. So, wasn't looking too good, man. Uh, Four representation wasn't looking too good as far as goals. I think the end of it might have been, had two behind. Uh, won a poster. But they really couldn't get it going. Uh, but Collingwood pressure looked good. Uh, they eventually were able to get the rebound scoring going, bro. The ball movement was moving well, bro. Uh, Bowman McCreary seemed to always be on the fast break going through the corridor. Collingwood loves the corridor, as we all know, bro. And, bro, they really were just, they were daring Melvin, bro. They kept the man out the back to keep. Uh, to keep Melbourne from running, bro. You know, they like to test uh, all the other teams that they play, the opposition. They like to test the back line of that team on a running gun style of play. And they, Melbourne was, I mean, not Melbourne, but uh, Collingwood really wasn't going for it, bro. I seen Darcy Moore out the back a couple times. and um, So there's just a couple ways that Melbourne can be beat, man. You see that? You've seen teams limited in length and on the wing, bro. And so a couple of these little methods seem to be working, bro. So little chinks in the armor of Melbourne will be interesting to see how they go. Uh, Melvin still had another problem with the forward representation, bro. Just not enough scoring, bro. Not enough uh, marks inside 50. It's just, it's just going to be a problem, bro. It definitely is. I don't know if they're flag favorites at this point anymore. Uh, they let Mason Cox go to fuck off, bro. They're supposed to be having this fire defense. I know they beat up. I know Stephen May was out. Uh, but Mason Cox, bro. He turned up on our decimated ass defense. Y'all defense is supposed to be like that, bro. And, well, Mace Cox turned up and looked third quarter, boy. That boy had a strong performance, boy, as far as intercept marks and goals, bro. That boy really kicked. That boy looked dangerous, bro. One of the better boys in the game, for sure, bro. Uh, Collins scored the last seven out of eight goals, bro. Uh, so, boys were doing that, bro. And boys had Melvin back on their heels, bro. Clayton Oliver had a great game, bro. I'll give him that. He had 16 touches in the first quarter. Finished with 41, uh, 43, excuse me, and he won. Uh, I think best on the ground he did. Uh, Miles check had four goals. Nick Dacos had a great game, bro. So uh, it was looking great, bro. It was, it was it was very interesting, bro. It was a battle between Sidebottom and, and Langdon on the wing. And really at the end of the day, bro. 
Collingwood, if they could just be consistent, bro. That's the main thing with them, bro. If they are consistent, playing at a high level that they are, oh, man, I hate to play them again, bro. I hate too shit, bro. But I would love to knock them boys off and find them at the same time. You feel me? But, yeah, man. I don't know where Melbourne's going to go from here, bro. Uh, I know y'all got it in y'all. I'm not completely writing y'all off, bro. I know y'all definitely finish top four. At least if you don't, if you don't, I'll be very disappointed, very shocked with that, bro. Uh, Max Gone's actually out for like four or five weeks, bro. So, ooh, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. They lucky they got a buy coming up. But yeah, man. So that's pretty much what that is, bro. Round thirteen, man. A short week, like I said, man. Uh, we're very entertained with this week's footy, bro. I wasn't. Uh, I guess the, the wins weren't too surprising, but all in all, the game wasn't too bad. The games all six of them. So happy customer here, man. Hopefully next week give us another. String of games, man. I could be happy with, bro. Also, yeah, man. Like, comment, subscribe. You know all that, bro. Hop on the Patreon if you feel like uh, supporting us uh, through monetary gifts, bro. That'll help all go back to the channel and go back to supporting our footy team. Um, that me and Juwan have that we created, uh, Grow Time Pirates. If you don't know, um, so yeah, man. Everything's for a good cause, bro. Trying to upgrade equipment, trying to make everything look a little better, and be a little bit more professional, bro. Um, Definitely strive to make the channel better than it is. I'm happy uh, with the growth that we've had so far, um, with the strides that we made, but definitely would like to make leaps and bounds uh, better. So, I mean, I appreciate y'all, bro. Catch y'all 